Hey guys, it's Ty, back with another video. I asked you guys in the community tab what kind of video you wanted to see, and over half of y'all chose how to plan for a furry convention. So buckle up and hold on tight, because we're going on a trip. Seatbelts, everyone! All right, here we <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not actually going on a trip. I was just meaning that as a figure of speech. <laughs> anyway, here are some helpful tips and tricks to plan for your next furry convention. Number one, pick your convention. For this example, I'm going to be saying Megaplex because that's actually my next convention. And hey, if you're going to be there, I'm hosting a So You Want to Be an Actor Slash Voice Actor panel. Come check it out. We're going to have tons of fun. Shameless plug. But I will say, if this is your first time choosing a convention, I would suggest choosing it months in advance because that gives you enough time to... Number two, figuring out how you're going to get there, aka travel. Furry conventions happen all over the world, whether you're going to Japan or Europe or even if there's a furry convention right down the road from you. You have to travel to get there. For 90% of the conventions that I go to, I always fly, only because I really hate driving if I have to. But if you're on a budget, it may be cheaper to drive, plus it could be cost effective if you're riding with other furs to the same con. Great, now that travel's taken care of, now all you need is number three, hotel rooms. Now this one can be kind of tricky, as many of the big name conventions such as Anthrocon, FWA, or MFF usually sell out of their hotel rooms very quickly or have some weird lottery system in place. But hey, let's say you are one of the quick ones to get one. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to room alone? Or do you want to split the room? To me, splitting the room cost is one of, if not the cheapest way to get a hotel room, especially if you're on a budget. Most furry conventions have a dedicated telegram channel where they always host chats about sharing rooms for those looking. Or, if you still use Twitter, you can just post there that you're looking for a roomie. Now that you have all the numbers of how much everything is going to cost, now you can, number four, save money for the con. Now, I kind of talked about this in my do's and don'ts furry con video, link in the description down below. But basically, you want to make sure you have enough money to spend on the con, whether that's for your room or flight or just in merchandise. Cons aren't cheap. I always suggest, if you can, make sure you bring a minimum of $300 as backup money. As my grandmother always told me, it's better to have and not need than need and not have. But with that, now you have your con selected, your travel taken care of, your room booked, and you just saved enough money to now do number five. Have fun at the convention. Conventions are an awesome place to see old friends and make new ones. It's a place to escape the everyday dread of work. But most of all, it's a place to just go out and have fun and be your furry self. Well, that wraps up my tips and tricks on how to plan for a furry con. Do you have any tips that I didn't cover? If so, please let me know in the comment section down below. And hey, while you're down there, go ahead and click that subscribe button and leave a like on this video. It really helps out the channel and helps spread this video to other furries. But until the next one, Ta-ta for now. But I will say, if you're choosing a furry con, uh, no. Most furry conventions have dedicated telegram channels. Telegram. Te te